Okay guys, I've just been doing a few experiments with the choke in the trigger circuit. Uh, basically I've done uh, three experiments. The first experiment, uh, not really experiment, just demonstration I guess, uh, shows the normal Benini circuit, amp jaw and RPM, and it also has a strobe uh, just above the coil so you can see exactly how many pulses there are and where the pulses are occurring, which is really handy. I got that little tip from Lee, I'll link to his video uh, about the inductor and the trigger circuit as well, that'll be in the description. And then for the second test, I've put the choke in the trigger circuit so we can see the difference between uh, having the choke in the trigger circuit and, and having it out. And then for the third experiment, I've just uh, stuck in another choke, so we've basically got two chokes in series, which doubles the inductance and doesn't really have very good results, but uh, you'll see that in a minute anyway. What I've also done, uh, so as well as put the strobe on the, on the top of the coil so you can see where it's pulsing is I put an ammeter, an attackometer, up here and that's going to be showing you the RPM and the amp jaw as it's accelerating which is pretty handy. Uh, so yeah, first, uh, first demonstration, no choke. Okay, well, and the pulses didn't show very well on that video for some reason, sorry about that, but uh, you get the idea, and we've also got the amp jaw and the top RPM, which I'll just check the notes. Let's see, top RPM was 3140, and the amp jaw was 1.48 amps. To try and find out how efficiently it's pulsing, I take the RPM, so that was 3140 RPM and then times that by the number of magnets, which in my case is 6, and that gives us 18,840 pulses per minute. And so to find out how that works out with amps, you want to take your amp jaw, and I normally take it in milliamps, so that's 1,480 milliamps, divided by 18,840, equals 0 0.078556 blah 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 let's just call it 0 0.078 for argument's sake which uh, is not too bad but uh, main thing you should notice in the video is just the width of the pulse it's um, particularly wide especially compared to the upcoming experiments so here we go with the second experiment with the choke in the trigger circuit. And again, all I've done, like I've done on all of these, is just adjusted the resistance so that it's at the uh, lowest amp draw to make one pulse. And so, let's have a look.
flavor. That demonstration was a little bit clearer. You can clearly see the pulses, which is great. And we also have our RPM and our amp draw. And uh, one thing you'll notice on the video is that the pulses are much shorter than they are without the choke in the trigger circuit. And uh, we expected the reason for that would be because the pulse is delayed and so it's going to be on for a shorter time. But uh, having a closer look at it, it seems like the end is cut off as well. Uh, it's uh, the pulse basically stopping uh, a lot sooner than it was uh, without the choke in the trigger circuit. So uh, that seems like a good thing, that's what's cutting down the amps. Uh, why it's going faster like that, I can only guess. Uh, but let's have a look at the results. results. So top RPM was 3,355 RPM and it was drawing 318 milliamps. So 3,355 times 6 equals 20,130 pulses per minute. So 318 amps divided by 20,130 equals 0 0.01887 blah blah blah. So we'll just uh, call that uh, 0 0.019, which is very good, especially compared uh, to what it was like without the choke. That's a, a lot less amps per pulse. Uh, so. It seems like it's uh, it seems like it's beneficial. It seems like it's um, an improvement. I'm still not too sure whether it benefits charging. Um, so I'll let you draw your own conclusions about that.